All right, in this video, we're going to talk about some of the ways in which cells can regulate cell division or the cell cycle. So why is it important? Well, there needs to be coordination of cell division. In multicellular organisms, they need to be able to coordinate cell division across different tissues and organs. In other words, cell division doesn't happen at the same time, at the same rate, in all parts of the bodies of multicellular living things. Obviously, we need cell division for normal growth, for development, for maintenance. But again, it has to happen in a coordinated way. So there has to be some coordinated timing of cell division. The rate of cell division is also coordinated and is different in different parts of the body of a living thing. In which not all cells have the same cell cycle. So let's talk a little bit about frequency of cell division. Different cell types divide differently. In the embryo, the cell cycle is about 20 minutes or less. In other words, the cells are dividing about every 20 minutes or so in that embryonic state. Skin cells divide pretty frequently throughout life. They have about a 12 to 24 hour cycle. Liver cells have the ability to divide, but they don't do it very often. About once every year or two, liver cells will divide to replace ones that have been damaged or worn out. Some cells in the body of humans, for instance, don't divide. Nerve cells, muscle cells, once they're formed, they don't divide after they reach maturity. They go into that, what we call a G0, this resting phase, permanently. So how is all this regulated? Well, there are various points along the cell cycle where control can happen. And there are two what we call irreversible points. Once you get past these points, we're going to move on to the next step in the cell cycle. So one of them is replication of genetic material. Once you replicate the genetic material, you need to move on to the next step of cell division. And then the other separation of the sister chromatids, when the sister chromatids divide, we need to finish that cell division process. So there are various checkpoints along the way to make sure that the cell is doing the things that it needs to do before it goes on to the next step. So, so it makes sure that things were done correctly, everything's been done, and if it's not, it can stop the cell cycle to allow for those processes to happen correctly. So what, what are these checkpoints? So at these checkpoints, there are chemical signals that will be produced by the cell uh, to either stop or to allow it to go on. And those signals are only produced, you know, when things need to stop or when, they're, when we're ready to move on, different signals are going to be produced. So if the, if the signal tell, tells us or indicates that these processes that need to happen have been completed correctly, then it's going to be a go signal. Otherwise, it will stop it. So in the cell cycle, there are three major checkpoints. There's one between the G1 phase and the S phase. Basically, making sure that the cell is ready to copy the DNA, to copy the chromosomes. The G2 and the M, or mitosis stage, adds another checkpoint. At this point, we want to make sure that the DNA synthesis, the copying of the DNA has been completed correctly. We have two complete sets of DNA that can be put into the new cells that will be produced as a result of mitosis. And then the spindle checkpoint happens during mitosis. The spindle, remember, is what connects to the chromosomes and allows to move the chromosomes. And this is basically making sure all the chromosomes are attached to the spindle so when it goes through the stages of mitosis, the chromosomes and the sister chromatids get separated properly. So let's talk about this. So the G1S is kind of a very critical, in fact, it's the most critical checkpoint check in the cell cycle. This is the primary decision about whether we need to move, proceed forward into moving towards dividing or 
go into a resting state. So if it gets the go signal here, it's going to divide. So what determines this? Has the cell grown to the proper size? Again, cell size can have an effect on cell division because as a cell gets bigger, the surface to volume ratio gets smaller and it's harder for the cell to get in to the, uh, get the nutrients in and out. The DNA to cytoplasm ratio decreases as well. Does the cell have the nutrients that it needs? External signals, growth factors produced in, by various cells in the body that will tell the cells or cause cells to go through mitosis. So if the cell doesn't receive the correct signal, it's going to exit the cycle and switch into this G0, this resting phase. And it may stay there for until it dies or wears out, or it may eventually go back into the cell cycle, depending on what kind of cell we're talking about. So the G0 phase is a non-dividing, differentiated state. Most human cells are in the G0 phase at, during any given point in your in time. Uh, with the exception of the skin cells, most cells don't divide nonstop. For instance, we talked about liver cells. They, they, they go into this G0 state, but they can be called back when they, new cells need to be replaced. Nerve and muscle cells, they don't ever come out of that G0 phase. So what causes cell division? How do cells know when it's time to divide? Can you have the clues like surface-to-volume ratio, DNA-to-volume to, to ratio? You have signals from various cells. Again, signals are usually proteins. So an activator is going to cause the cell to, to move towards division, where an inhibitor is going to stop it. Sometimes, you know, like with the sperm and egg, when the sperm and egg unite, that actually that fusion of that egg is what triggers mitosis. 